Could the commanders make some trades on Monday? Not likely. Could they be involved in some April Fool shenanigans? Highly likely. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Join the consistently growing group of insiders by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders and sign up. And from there, you will get live text messages from me in-game analysis, one-on-one conversations, mock draft conversations, all kinds of stuff going on over there in the text messages. No hashtags, no apps, no filters. It goes straight to your phone. It comes straight to me from your phone. Whole lot of bonus content going on over there as well. So again, Locked On Commanders insiders, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to text me today. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for commandercountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. And I'm here with you every Monday through Friday along with our everydayers and everydayers. I always appreciate your continued support for the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers, you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. On today's episode, it is Mock Draft Monday, so we're looking at a four-round mock draft from NFL.com. We've got an insider mock draft to look at. I've got my own mock draft to bring you. But first, we are going to address the fact that, yes, it is April Fool's Day. And April Fool's Day can be a lot of fun, but April Fool's Day can also get a little bit dumb, especially in the new world of socially connected sports reporting where everybody can have a source, everybody can be a reporter, and it's great. Don't get me wrong, but April Fool's Day is one of those days you don't want to get got by a false story or a false headline, and they're going to be popping up all over the place. So I thought we'd steer into it. Like I said, it can be a little bit fun, right? So let's have a little bit of fun with this and look at three Washington Commanders April Fool's headlines to look out for that could live in the realm of reality or possibly happening, but most likely won't be happening, at least on Monday. The first one, the Jonathan Allen trade conversation, basically ever since he started talking publicly about his frustrations and being sick of losing and all those things that every human being, I think, can uh, can appreciate from John Allen, which goes beyond or before last year's trade deadline. There has just been consistent conversation about whether or not the defense tackle is going to be a part of the Washington Commanders long term plans. Well, Washington Commanders general manager Adam Peters was asked about John Allen specifically at the NFL's annual league meetings uh, last week in Orlando, Florida. He said, quote, we've had some great talks with Jonathan and can't wait to work with work with him. He's awesome. He's a great, great young man and he's a great player. And so really excited to work with him. So we are not interested in trading him, end quote. So very blunt, very upfront. Very specific now, just because you're not interested in doing something doesn't mean you won't do it, right? And that's kind of where this is going to live. And potentially you could see a false headline come through that Jonathan Allen has, in fact, been traded. Uh, John Allen, 29 years old, two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle, has 39 career sacks, five and a half or more in each of the last three years. Uh, An opposing team adding him would be adding about $14 million to their salary cap this year. The commanders would gain about $12 million salary cap space after his, his dead cap figure. Uh, and then clears the 21 point, I think $1 million uh, in cap hit that he's supposed to have this season. The day two pick is the minimum I think you would probably see uh, in return for Jonathan Allen if the commanders were to actually go through and trade him. The 2024 cap number that the the gaining team would be adding, plus the likelihood that he's going to need a new contract. He's got two years uh, left on that deal, including this year. So after next year, his deal expires. So that new team is probably going to want to give him another deal, probably extend him out another year or two. Uh, on top of the current two years that he's got. So all those things considered, an NFL team not likely to want to give up a first-round pick for him, but I think you could look at the ballpark of day two, maybe a third-round pick uh, that has some conditions that could elevate it to a second-round pick uh, if so, if those conditions are met. So that's trade idea number one. Trade number two, the Washington Commanders adding a player in wide receiver Brandon Ayuk from the San Francisco 49ers. This isn't so much something that we've heard rumors of the Commanders specifically going after Brandon Ayuk, but more so people just kind of wondering or speculating that the 49ers may need to trade their talented wide receiver if they can't come to terms on a contract agreement. And the latest that I've heard or been reading around the internet uh, about Brandon Ayuk's contract situation is that they're not close. Uh, Brandon Ayuk was the 25th overall pick in the 2020 NFL draft. 
He's currently owed $14.1 million this year on his fifth year option, uh, which is fully guaranteed, of course. So the Washington Commanders would bring all $14.1 million of that over to their uh, salary cap. He's only six feet tall, so he's not the tallest dude in the room. Not going to add uh, any height to an already relatively short wide receiver group. But he was Jaden Daniels' teammate in 2019 at Arizona State. 65 catches, uh, almost 1,200 yards together, eight touchdowns in that one season at Arizona State. The Niners, again, don't appear to be actively shopping Ayuk, but they would need to get first-round value from him or they would want to get first-round value for him back uh, if they did go ahead and trade him. And obviously, or honestly, they would probably also want to be moving up in the NFL draft using that capital to go ahead and do it. Now, obviously, Washington is not going to be trading the number two overall pick for Brandon Ayuk. So San Francisco would likely want to get close enough to get one of the top three receivers in this year's draft. Uh, no later than number eight, I would estimate, which currently is owned by the Atlanta Falcons. So you're probably, for Washington, giving up number 36 in a 2025 second round pick. Uh, and that's going to depend on Atlanta then taking a package of picks with the 49ers and being willing to move back all the way to the 31st overall pick, which I think is a really uh, far reach. Uh, but that's how far they would need to move up to guarantee themselves a shot at getting Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, or Rome Adunze. So, again, that's that's another reason this falls in the April Fool's headline category, right? I don't see Atlanta wanting to go all the way back to number 31 from number 8. That's quite uh, the fall, especially with new quarterback Kirk Cousins in town. So, more likely... Uh, the more likely outcome is that Atlanta would offer or would get an offer for number eight directly for Brandon Ayuk and some later future draft capital. Uh, so the Falcons would add Ayuk, move out of number eight to 31 and probably another first or something like that uh, and, and send them directly to the 49ers. Now, uh, also, Brandon Ayuk would need a new contract, something that what the Washington group doesn't really seem too high on. They haven't really handed out a lot of multi-year deals uh, here in this free agency, spray free agency period or right re-signing period. Most of their contracts are first year or one year deals. Uh, but Brandon Ayuk is a little bit different there. He's had experience with Jane Daniels. Like I mentioned before, uh, Adam Peters also has experience with him back in San Francisco. So if they see the value in him and they see that connection between him and the quarterback that they may uh, end up drafting in April being fruitful, then certainly something you could at least talk about. Again, I don't, I think that they're too far away uh, I think the idea works. You know what I mean? I think it makes a lot of sense, but I think that they're just too far away in draft spaces uh, to make this deal really work. So that's why I put it on the April Fool's headline list. Number three, Terry McLaurin being traded. Um, apparently there was a rumor going around, mostly on social media. I never saw anything coming from a legitimate source. So I never really addressed it, but I feel like this is probably the time to address it because I think tomorrow on Monday or the day today, if you're listening or watching this on Monday, is the day that you could see some people try to spin up some some false rumors or some false news. Steelers fans are big fans of the idea of the Steelers trading for uh, Terry McLaurin. Apparently also Steelers fans are fans of trading for Ayuk. They basically just want another receiver uh, on their team. JP Finley heard enough about this recently that he actually reached out to a source who told him that no, Terry McLaurin is not getting traded, is not being discussed uh, in trade. So if whatever rumors are out there flying around, it, it motivated JP enough uh, that he decided to go ahead and try to get some sort of confirmation or lack of confirmation on him. McLaurin is currently entering the second season of a three-year extension that he signed with the Washington Commanders. Uh, he's due to count against the salary cap for $24.1 million, and he also carries a $33.95 million dead cap space. So the Washington Commanders, first of all, to trade him, you're, you're trading your best receiver uh, and what's not exactly the best receiving group in the NFL, and then you're going to take about a $10 million loss in the cap to do it. Uh, the team is training for him. If you take all those guarantees so that they don't take the dead cap hit, well, you're going to give less draft capital. So, again, you're kind of biting yourself if you're Washington on either direction. A to Z Sports recently presented three trade uh, ideas for Terry McLaurin to go to the Colts, which is interesting only because Terry McLaurin from Indianapolis, fan of Marvin Harrison, so you presume was a fan of the Colts uh, growing up. The one that I think is most likely to happen, not that any of them are happening, but if it was to happen, would be the Indianapolis Colts sending a first-round pick to the Washington Commanders for Terry McLaurin. That is the number 15th overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. So, I felt like let's steer into this April Fool's deal and let's make that trade. Let's see what happens, what the draft board looks like, what a mock draft class could look like if the Washington Commanders were to bite on that type of a deal. Again, not that they're going to, so don't get too wrapped up into the fake headlines, but it also brings up a good conversation about the potential wide receivers that the Washington Commanders could draft in real life without the April Fool's spin on it. So, it works doubly. That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.
Today's episode of Locked On Commanders brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers, you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks that you can then use on bar parlays. You can use on money line spreads. You can use straight up. Uh, you can use against the odds. You can bet on the NCAA tournament, Major League Baseball, basketball, hockey, so much more, including NFL futures. We are down to the final four in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Two number one seeds remain on Saturday. The Purdue Boilermakers are nine and a half point favorites over NC State. And the number one UConn Huskies are 11 and a half point favorites to beat Alabama. On the women's side, we still have two elite eight matchups featuring number one and number three seeds in both of those. The biggest one, though, features Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes, who are one and a half point favorites over Angel Reese and the LSU Tigers. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel America's number one sports book. Continuing now with today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day, every day, every dayers. Make sure you come back tomorrow. We'll have another brand new episode, full week of content coming up. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your television all day long? And do you find yourself turning it down when all these shouting begins? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Mock Draft Monday here on Locked On Commanders, and I decided to kind of steer into this April Fool's headline thing. And, you know, of the trades that are most likely, well, first of all, the trades that are most feasible, I would I would probably say, uh, would be the one for Terry McLaurin going to the Indianapolis Colts. Not that it's possible or, or even likely to happen at all, but just the one that you could wrap your head around the most. Jonathan Allen trade. There's a lot of discussion there. Would it be a second round pick? Would it be a third round pick? Some people are still going to say it needs to be a first round pick, even with the cap implications and the new contract and all that stuff. But at least with Terry McLaurin, we have a group out there that's saying these are the pitches. These are the, the draft compensation ideas. So I decided let's spin into that. What if the Washington commanders did make a move like that as upsetting as it would be to most commanders fans? What then would that draft class look like? An interesting thing happened along the way. We identified a wide receiver at a position in the NFL draft where this team could actually take a wide receiver anyway. So going through this whole thing, number two overall, uh, we didn't make a trade there because, again, we're just kind of focusing on this Terry McLaurin trade. So we take quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Right now it just looks like Jaden is the most likely person uh, to come up on the, on the board there, number two for the Washington Commanders. We'll continue to digest. We'll continue to take in all the information as it comes through. I know Drake May had a really good pro day, and that's great. Uh, but I still feel like Jaden Daniels has the leg up on Drake because Jaden Daniels also had a, a pretty solid pro day. 15th overall, that is the pick that in this mock situation, the Washington Commanders would be uh, getting that pick in place of Terry McLaurin. Offensive tackle Olu Fashanu from Penn State, still available at that time. That's a slam dunk. You take that pick. Uh, you run it up to the podium. Number 36 overall, the rest of these picks are all organic picks, right? Number 36 overall, edge rusher Chris Braswell out of Alabama. You add a little bit of edge uh, edge talent there, start to reset that group a little bit. I know they did a lot of signing in that position group this offseason, but I don't look at any of those signings as slam dunk long-term answers. You get, you get Chris Braswell in there, you give him some time to develop, and you have some guys that you can trust on the field if he can't get on the field right away. Number 40 is where we address the wide receiver position. And I'll be honest with you, I thought about addressing a number 36 because I saw Troy Franklin out of Oregon sitting there, but I also saw some other guys. I was like, okay, if I need to take one of those guys, I'll be okay with it. I did not think Chris Braswell would make it to 40. So we went with the edge at 36. At 40, we come back and we take Troy Franklin out of Oregon. And here's the thing. Even if Terry McLaurin is still on the roster, which he will be, which all signs point to him actually being there. I still think the Washington Panthers could consider taking Troy Franklin number 40. Now, if number two is Jaden Daniels, number 36 is an edge or a tackle, doesn't really matter either way, then I still think that Troy Franklin could be the pick at number 40. The wild card here is if the Washington Panthers move back into the back into the first round, which I expect them to at least try to. I don't know if we'll get confirmation that they tried to on draft night, but I do expect Adam Peters and the Washington Commanders to be aggressive to try to get back into the back into the first round to try to get one of those top four or five tackles off the board. If they are unsuccessful or if they're successful and number 40 is still theirs to play with, I think Troy Franklin could certainly be uh, an option. So 87.2 receiving grade according to PFF in his final year in Eugene. Uh, he started every game in the sophomore and junior seasons. 
He's a smooth strider when he's run. He's a top explosive play, uh, play explosive play pass catcher for Oregon's offense uh, in his two years starting. Vertical threat. He's done it from the slot. He's done it from the perimeter. So that's versatility that you know that uh, Cliff Kingsbury is going to appreciate having. Not the greatest 50-50 ball guy, not the greatest contested catch guy, but he's the guy that you look to take the lid off the offense or take the lid off the defense. And he comes in at six foot three. So he's taller than every other receiver you've got in the room. And I think that addresses a little bit of that as well. So Troy Franklin out of Oregon, if he is there early day two, pick number 36, pick number 40, certainly a name that I think the Washington Commanders will have to consider. I do think tackle takes precedence though. So obviously if you don't have that first round pick because you're not trading Terry McLaurin, then if you come back on the clock, either at 36 or at 40 or in the in back in the first round after you trade some picks, uh, then obviously you have to take a tackle, I think, somewhere in that range as well. Potentially could even take two tackles. But if one of those spots can go wide receiver, Troy Franklin is interesting. When you look at the third round, number 67, a guy like linebacker Junior Colson out of Michigan is available. Now, the Washington Commanders could honestly push linebacker down the list of needs altogether this season with Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvre, and Jamin Davis on the roster. Could push it down into day three. Talk about it there. But I'd like a guy like Junior Colson to come and be that fourth linebacker probably this year. Uh, maybe even if he surprises some people and Frankie Lou takes over that primary pass rushing role, maybe Junior comes in and shows enough range as a cover linebacker, off-ball linebacker uh, to, to take some snaps from Jamin in this final year on his rookie contract. But they could go a lot of different ways. 78 and went tackle Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. He's a right tackle by trade. If you get Olu Fushanu in the first round or if you trade back into the first round and get yourself a guy that you can cross-train to left tackle or a natural left tackle, Blake Fisher is another guy that you look down the road. You say Andrew Wiley, you know what I mean? He's an older veteran. If he struggles, if he gets hurt, or even if it's just next year or two years down the line, Blake Fisher is a good guy uh, to go ahead and, and try to develop. Number 100, I went with another interesting prospect here, and I went with safety slash running back. That's an interesting combination. Sione Vaki out of Utah. This is a guy who played defensive back. He played running back for the Utah Utes, and there is plenty of talk that he might do the same in the NFL. Now, there might be a team that just says, you know what, let's make you a running back. Might be a team that says, let's make you a, a nice versatile safety. Either way, when you hear the, the conversations that Dan Quinn is having, that the staff has been having about putting players in the right position, if you have a coaching staff that is truly interested in finding guys who have talent and finding the right way to make them successful, Sione Vaki, he pretty much fits that bill uh, about as much as you can. It is a pretty solid pick at number 100. Uh, near the end of the third round there. It's a compensatory pick. It's a pick you got in the trade for Chase Young last year. So it's not one of your organic picks. I like that to go that direction. And I think that if this staff, again, if they're true to their word, and you give a guy like Cliff Kingsbury, a guy who's got that kind of versatility, along with Brian Robinson, along with Austin Eckler, along with Chris Rodriguez, that's a pretty solid running book, running back group there. Uh, but I also don't see which of those running backs you don't take with you on the roster. Of course, you could just make him a safety Use them on special teams. So, again, a lot that could be unlocked there. Number 139, I went tight end Ben Sinat out of Kansas State because even if Zach Ertz is that true blue starter this year, you got to look forward to the future there, and I don't think they have that future solidified on the roster yet, that position. Number 152, safety James Williams. Miami, Florida, he's a cover safety. So you add him to the group there with Percy Butler, some other guys, maybe Quan Martin can work down uh, in the slot if one of those free safeties kind of comes up. Maybe Derek Forrest plays next to Jeremy Chin and, and, and presents some of that coverage ability. Number 222, I went with offensive lineman Tanner Bordellini out of Wisconsin. Bordellini really showed up at the NFL scouting combine. Really liked a lot of things that he saw that he showed us. And when you look at center Tyler Biotish, guard Sam Cosme, uh, and you got another guard coming in who's a little bit unproven from the Kansas City Chiefs, looking for that opportunity to start. But you also got some young guys from last year's uh, draft, including Ricky Stromberg. You bring Tanner Bordellini into the mix. You have a nice, good, young depth uh, group of depth, rather, on the interior offensive line and you just figure out who the best five are as you go through this whole process. So that's the mock draft again. Uh, the mock drafts inspired by the April Fool's trade of Terry McLaurin, but still a lot of things that we can draw from that type of a mock draft for the real-life NFL draft that will happen at the end of April. So again, look out for those falls headlines. Uh, I'll be looking out for them all day too, and any headline I do see, uh, we'll definitely be having a double check to make sure I'm not getting duped. But coming up next, we got an insider mock draft and a pro NFL.com mock draft. Four rounds that we're going to look at coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What is the first thing that you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Maybe you go for a run, maybe you take a nap, read a book, play a video game, watch a show. 
go out to eat, maybe whatever you would do. We spend a lot of times in our lives wishing that we had more time to live it. The question is, what is that time going to be used for? If time was unlimited, how would you use all of it? Well, the best way for you to squeeze whatever that special thing is into your schedule is to know that it's important to you first and foremost and how to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you and also help you find ways to do more of it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Simply fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. If it's not working, you can switch at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Wrapping up today's mock draft Monday episode of Locked On Commanders. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've done, done a mock draft Monday, so I was excited to get back into this. Insider Keith came through with a very interesting and generous mock draft uh, to share with everybody. At number six, he was able to draft quarterback Jaden Daniels, and that's number six that belongs to the New York Giants. So, yes, 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 Keith did go ahead and execute a trade with the New York Giants. The Giants move up to number two. They actually take Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy at number two, so they must really like them some J.J., New England went with quarterback Drake May at number three. I'm assuming the Cardinals and the Chargers both went receiver. And then Jaden Daniels is sitting there waiting in the green room nervously for the Washington Commanders to take him at number six. The rest of his class, he ended up with three offensive tackles throughout the day. Missouri edge rusher Darius Robinson. He also got wide receivers Lad McConkey and Xavier Leggett. So going heavy after the wide receiver room there. Texas tight end Jatavian Sanders and cornerbacks Mike Sanderson and MJ Devonshire. So, um, a lot of solid players there also collecting New England's first and second round picks next year. So quite the ambitious mock draft situation that PFN has over there. That's what Keith used uh, to formulate this mock draft. Hey, man, I mean, if that's the class that this team come away with, along with some extra draft capital, would not necessarily hate that at all. Of course, J.J. McCarthy with the Giants, Jane Daniels with the Commanders would be compared to each other for the entirety of their respective careers. Chad Reuter of NFL.com also recently uh, dropped a four-round mock draft that we haven't been able to cover yet. In the first round, he goes Jaden Daniels, LSU quarterback, uh, at number two. It's pretty popular, but, I mean, at the same time, plenty of guys taking Drake May. I think Bucky Brooks' last mock draft, he went Jaden, but I think Daniel Jeremiah's went Drake May. So, I mean, you know, it's it's going to flip-flop for most of the month. Uh, and, and, you know, the good news is we are in the month. Like, by this time next month, the draft, we'll be talking about who was drafted, not who might get drafted. Uh, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Number 36 overall, Reuter. Sent offensive tackle Jordan Morgan to the Arizona Wildcats. There were some questions about whether or not he had the arm length to play outside or if he needed to shift inside. I think most people agree that Morgan can play outside. Uh, it'll just be a matter of him getting the job done. So they go ahead and get a tackle there. Number 40, Reuter has cornerback Enos Rakestraw Jr. going to the Washington Commanders out of Missouri, which is interesting. I've seen some people have actually day one conversations about him, but here he slides into day two, uh, goes number 40th overall. Helps the Washington Commanders bolster their cornerback room again. A lot of questions around Benjamin St. Juice, around Emmanuel Forbes. I've been on the record that TJ Tampa out of Iowa State is available at that pick, uh, 36 or 40, that he would be a strong selection as well. Rake Straw is six feet, so he's not the tallest guy in the world. He's an off-coverage specialist, which I think doesn't necessarily fit what I envision for the Joe Witt Jr. defense. I think he's going to want more man-type guys, physical-type uh, corners, but... We haven't actually seen it yet, right? So, I mean, maybe maybe Reuter knows something I don't know. His run defense grade is 89, so he is he is he he does appear to be a solid tackler, which is something that this defense is going to covet. So while you're out there looking at any of your favorite cornerback prospects, remember they're going to have to tackle uh, in order to make this team. Number 67, Reuter comes back with another option, wide receiver Devontae Walker uh, out of North Carolina. So in my mock draft, we went receiver at 40, got a little bit of a taller guy here at 67. Reuter goes receiver. Six foot two, so a little bit shorter than the guy that I drafted, but still would be the tallest guy in the room uh, at the time. Kent, he played at Kent State in 2022, so he's not a teammate uh, of Sam Howell. Solid vertical threat with a little bit more height. Tight end, he went Cates or 78. Reuter went tight end, 78 at number 78 with Kate Stover out of Ohio State, a guy that we've talked about. And then at number 100, he went edge rusher Cedric Johnson out of Ole Miss, heading over to the Washington Commanders to help again bolster that young edge group. So I think that's kind of a common thread there. You want to get another receiver tight end is obviously a position of concern. Tackle obviously is a position of concern and adding to that edge room. The The great thing about what Adam Peters and the commanders have already done with that edge group is that you don't have to feel like you have to go there early. 
you know, if there's a guy you love, like maybe Chop Robinson there, by all means, pull the trigger. But if you don't love a guy, you can wait until later, third round, fourth round, maybe even fifth round. Get a guy to join KJ Henry, Andre Jones Jr., play behind Dante Fowler, play behind these other guys uh, that came in for for the Washington Warriors this offseason, develop behind them for future growth. So uh, good stuff there. Thank you to Insider Keith for that mock draft. Chad Reuters mock draft. We'll come back again next week. We've got about, what, four more mock draft Mondays uh, before we officially get into the actual NFL draft weekend. So we're we're not that far away. Uh, guys, so once again, thanks for coming through like you always do coming up tomorrow. We're going to continue our look at the free agent additions. I was doing this before the league meetings began last week. We're going to pick back up with it, looking at the free agent additions. I'm going to do film study. So insiders, you're going to be getting some film study uh, videos to you here on the show. You'll be getting uh, descriptions and, and what I found, character traits and all that stuff and how they fit with the team and updated depth charts on the show. So a lot of stuff dropping in the meantime. If you got questions or comments, throw them in the YouTube comment section or text me directly. As a Locked On Commanders insider, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. Don't forget to check out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 live streaming sports channel on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day, every day, or thanks for coming through like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.